Hey, uh, who, who, who wants to start? Tim, you guys certainly made a series of stops on fourth down, had the interception, also a lot of yards along the way. So how do you kind of evaluate and assess both in real time and, and looking at the film of last week? Well, I mean, the bottom line is our guys found a way to win. It wasn't always pretty. I, I like how we started the game. I think that our, our guys did a nice job of being really effective against the run and trying to take the run away, and that, that's where they start. And I thought we played with really good physicality to do that. Uh, what we didn't do a very good job of is get lined up, and that's on me as a coach and all of us coaches, um, and getting our guys to you know get that sense of urgency and get the call in quick. Um, you know, we're, we're playing against two first-round draft pick receivers and, and, a, and a quarterback with a live arm. Uh, we were a little bit limited in what we did just because of you know the the injury situation. Uh, not that it's an excuse, but but they're they're good coaches and they started figuring out what we were doing, um, and our guys just continue to keep playing hard and when we had those critical you know fourth down plays you know we made three of them those are essentially new turnovers and you know I was really proud that our guys stepped up in those moments and I think that was the difference in the ball game. When tempo has hit you each of the past two weeks and I don't imagine it'll be employed much this week how do you go about in practice this week, next week, to address that and 12 personnel when they were hitting you there a little bit in the third. Yeah, well, with with, with tempo, what you've got to do is is you've got to put your guys in those situations where they know the automatics that we go to, uh, so they're not waiting for you know a call from the sideline. And, and that's something we practiced uh, the last couple of days, and we'll you know continue to practice that until we get better at it. DJ Johnson's a, a guy that you turn to uh, on Saturday. Certainly, a guy with some comfort having played there. What does he bring to the table uh, in, in your eyes on defense? Well, I'll tell you, he's, he's got a lot of similar physical traits to Mikael. You know, I think both of those guys are really fluid in the hips, really good speed, ball skills, understand uh, our package, understand what offenses are trying to do. So, you know, when, when you've got both those guys at, at, at the number one position, you feel pretty good about not having to give them help all the time. And so, you know, we can play some defenses where you're, you're playing man on the island out there. At times we need to, you know, give them some help. But, you know, with him and Mikael both, I think, we feel as a coaching staff that they don't need that help all the time, that, that they go one on one with just about anybody in the country. How would, you, how would you assess the play in the second drive? I know the stats say one thing, but I know some of the schematic and what you're trying to do game plan was. How would how'd you guys play out there? Well, the, the, the big thing we talked to our guys about last week was Ohio State was effective in getting explosive plays. They were getting chunk plays of 50, 60, 70 yards and not having to drive. And we thought if we could keep it in front, and make them go the long, hard way that, that we would have a better chance to win a football game. And I, I think for the most part we did that. You know, we didn't let them get the ball thrown over our heads. Um, give them credit. You know, we, we had some pretty tight coverage that they hit some, I mean, guys draped all over them and, and they made good throws and catches. So, you know, take nothing away from them. You know, it, it, it wasn't just us. I mean, we played a good football team. And like I said, we, I was pleased with the way our guys competed, particularly on fourth down. Um, and when it got down tight to the red zone, you know, of making them, you know, go for it on fourth down and getting those stops. What was behind the thought, though, to have, I think, Triquiz in that field as opposed to being boundary? What was the, the thought there? We keep mixing guys up just so that they don't get a beat on where guys are. Um, you know, each week, you know, we're going to look for different matchups and, and try to get our best matched up on their best. Last week was particularly hard because they. <laughs> They had three excellent receivers, and it's like, you know, pick your poison. How do you assess the significance of uh, Bennett Williams and just what he did? And it seemed like almost every tackle was so low or right near the line yeah. of scrimmage. I, I thought Bennett really stepped up. You know, he's a guy that is a really heady football player, very physical. He probably doesn't have the most downfield speed, but he plays with a twitch, a really fast edge uh, where he can make plays. And you're, you're absolutely right. He had some open field tackles where if he doesn't make it, that thing may go for a bit. And he, he was solid and got guys down all the time. He, he timed up the blitz pretty good when we needed to make a stop there in the high red zone and got them off track so that, you know, we got them into a long, third and long and then a fourth down where we got to stop. Uh, he's made a ton of plays for us. And, you know, between him and Jamal, we really feel good about that star position because both of them have that, that explosive ability. You employed a true dime last week. What have you seen from Addison in particular to do that? And why you chose the corner combination as opposed to putting Jamal and Bennett together, put Addison deep, and I think it was Manning, Quez, yeah. uh, Bennett, etc. Kale. Well, you know, when we get into some you know definite throw situations like we did at the end of the football game, we want to look for our best matchups, and you know we're going to mix up some pressure, some man, some zones. Um, one of the things that that I think 
Brian, Brian does a really nice job of is playing that deep safety position because he's got such speed and range. And I, I think you know playing our dime package for him is ideal. And uh, it's something that I think as he continues to play, he'll get more confidence, and then hopefully that'll translate to more you know normal down distance situations. After Good Keith's time. performance, after Keith's performance last week, what do you want to see out of him making his first start in his home state? Well, you know, I'm, I'm hoping he he stays healthy. You know, he got dinged up a little bit last week, but I'll tell you what, for for a guy, you know, a year ago was was playing high school ball to have to you know go in, into the uh, shoe and play well. He played hard. Uh, you know, like most of our guys, he wasn't all, always right, but he was going fast. And he didn't practice a ton last week. He was dinged up as well. So the fact that he stepped up, uh, got out there, and competed, I was really impressed with. And I think he's going to, you know, obviously get a lot of confidence from being able to step up and look at himself and say, you know what, I competed against a pretty good, you know, good uh, ball team and held my own. Wasn't always perfect, but we'll learn from there and keep going from there. What well, makes Bossa such a good fit inside Bossa? What makes him a good fit inside coming from safety? How has he progressed in the last 10 days or so? Well, you know, you look at him and he, he slapped together pretty good. Um, he's a guy that's very, very physical, uh, smart football player. He moves like elite linebackers do. He can sink his hips, run, change direction. Um, he's a guy that can cover backs out of the backfield. So he gives you a lot of you know, possibilities as, as a will linebacker that, that you're looking for. He was playing the dimebacker position you know, the first couple weeks, so it's kind of a natural progression. Uh, obviously, his run fits are, are something we're going to continue to work with because that's a little bit new for him. But a lot of things he does was was what he was doing as a star, which is you know glorified Sam position. What do you think do you learned about this defense uh, that you didn't know before you guys went to Ohio? Well, you know I think I think we've got some decent depth of guys that'll compete, you know, uh, and guys that that don't flinch in a tough environment. You know we were, we were reeling a little bit there in the second half. You know we gave up a couple drives, but in the you know late in that fourth quarter, the last three times they had the ball, they didn't score, and it. Uh, have guys step up, have guys like DJ who caught a first down pass and we repped him a few times last week as a defensive end and you know taught him a couple of, of uh, things. For him to go in and get a sack when we needed to was really encouraging. Um, you, know, you got guys like Brandon Buckner who in, in a you know third down rule can r really rush the passer. You know, he stepped up. The, the moment wasn't too big for him. So getting a chance to, to see some guys. Nate Hukalani, I mean here's a guy who he was walked on here and the game obviously, you know, is in the balance, and he's out there making plays for us. And you know, for all those guys to step up the way they did and perform when they had to against an excellent team, I think it does nothing but give our guys confidence, and it gives me confidence that no matter what happens, our guys will find a way. And what areas have you Last seen? question. And what areas have you seen Jabril McNeil make kind of the most improvement um, kind of since preseason? Well, you know, it's been tough on him because he started as an outside backer for us, so he moved halfway through. He played inside backer, you know, as a, as a high school senior, so he, he's got some natural, you know, physical traits there. He's just got to learn the playbook a little bit better. Um, he's a little undersized right now. We got to put some more meat on him, but we think he's got a really big upside. And, and once he understands more what what to do, and then puts that weight on, he's going to be a heck of a backer. Playbook wise, do you, do you feel like he's at least where he needs to be to get out there? Uh, he's he's getting closer. You know, again, it wasn't really his fault. You know, he started you know at outside then. As we, you know, had some injuries, you know, hit us, uh, we had to move about halfway through camp to the inside. So, you know, he's he's progressing really well. He's just not quite where we want him to be. Appreciate it, Tim. All right, I appreciate.